Good day, everyone. How are you? Miss Fatima misses you so much. Hope you're doing good with your families at home. This time, in Lecture 3, we'll be covering a new lesson about the air. Air is present everywhere around us. But what is this air made of? What does the word air pollution mean? What are sources of air pollution? And can we be part of protecting our nature from air pollution? Is there any way to reduce this air pollution? Let's see. Air is all around us. Even in the room where you are sitting. But it cannot be seen, felt, tasted or smelt unless it is dirty. We cannot see the air when it is clean, but we can feel the air when it moves, like when the wind blows. We can even hear it when it moves very fast. Air can give shape to things as it occupies space. Air has weight. So, we know now that air is found everywhere around us. And most of the time, we take air for granted. But we know that it's essential for life. So, what do living things need air for? What do you think? What do um, humans, uh, animals and plants use air for? What did you say? Breathing? Perfect. So, we all as living beings need the oxygen in the air to live. In the human body, the lungs give oxygen to the blood and give back carbon dioxide to the air. Also, plants need the air to live and animals too. Let's together watch this video. The respiratory system extracts oxygen from the air, a gas our cells need to live and grow. The respiratory system also eliminates carbon dioxide that cells produce after using oxygen. This process is known as respiration. Humans, animals, plants need the oxygen in the air to live. They cannot breathe without it. The respiration process is essential for the living being on earth. But what is the source of oxygen in the air? Who put or who releases this oxygen in the air? Do you have any idea? Yes? What did you say? Perfect. So photosynthesis is the process that we plant to do and by this process, the oxygen is released into the air. Plants use water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight in order to make their own food, which is a kind of sugar, and release the oxygen that is essential for life. What about a quick reminder about photosynthesis? Let's go! Pay attention for a moment. To that plant in your balcony, unlike your cat, it does not walk around requesting, or rather demanding, food. Your plant is happy with the water you give it. But is that all a plant needs to survive? Water? Does a plant need food? The answer is yes. So where does a plant get its food from? Well, plants make their own food. And this video will tell you how. My name is Ayush Sinha. Plants need three things to make food. The first, you guessed it, is water. When you water a plant, its roots absorb water from the soil. The water is then passed on to the stem, which in turn passes it on to the leaves of the plant. The second things plants need to make their food is carbon dioxide. You've probably heard of carbon dioxide. It is a chemical 
that is in the air. So how do plants absorb carbon dioxide? Well, plants have small openings on their leaves. These are called stomata. Carbon dioxide is absorbed through these small openings. Once plants have both water and carbon dioxide, they need one more key ingredient, that is light. Now, the leaves of a plant contain tiny things called chloroplasts. Chloroplasts is what give leaves their green colour. However, chloroplasts also take carbon dioxide, water and light and turn them into sugar and oxygen. This sugar is the plant's food. The oxygen, on the other hand, is released back into the atmosphere. We know now that living things breathe. They take oxygen and they, they release carbon dioxide in the air. By the process of photosynthesis, the green plants take the carbon dioxide and release oxygen into the air. But what helps to keep the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the air in balance? As we said in nature, everything must be in balance. The carbon dioxide amount and also the oxygen amount. But what helps keep them in balance this way? Yes? Let me show you something. This picture may remind you. Yes, excellent job. It's the carbon cycle. Okay, it is the carbon cycle. Do not forget that the carbon cycle is the cycle by which the uh, amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the air stay in balance. So, air is the earth atmosphere. Air around us is a mixture of many gases and dust particles. Until now we know that oxygen and carbon dioxide are components of the air, but they are not the only ones. Some other gases are also a part of the air composition. But do we use air for breathing only? Is it used by plants for photosynthesis only? What do we need the air for? Let's see. The air is used in many activities, like parachuters use air to fly, they need it to fly. Also, the astronauts and the divers use the oxygen tank to breathe in uh, inside the water or outside the earth. This air that we use to breathe and use by the plant to make the to go through the photosynthesis process is made of different gases the oxygen the carbon dioxide it has water vapor in it also but as i said before it has many more gases what are these gases hi i'm a physics student ever wonder what air is made of well i did so i looked into it a bit if you think about it you can feel the wind on your face while you're enjoying a nice view or riding on top of a fighter jet. But even though you can feel it, you can't see it. What's up with that? Well, to find this out, let's get a better look of what air is made of by shrinking ourselves to the size of its building blocks. Ready? So we shrunk ourselves a hundred billion times, which is nice, but now we can't see anything. This is because at this scale, we're actually smaller than visible light. Not very interesting for a video, but if we use science, we can piece together our knowledge of the world on this scale, and that way, we can recreate what it would look like. Welcome to the micro world of air. The blobs you see around you are called molecules, and these molecules are what air is made of. The colors aren't real, by the way. Let's get a closer look at these thingies. Um, this one. This is nitrogen. Two of them, actually. We like to write it like this, N2. And these two guys are stuck together like I don't know what. Figuring out how to separate these two is probably one of the most important discoveries of mankind. This is because it enabled us to efficiently create food for plants. And without this fertilizer, we wouldn't be able to feed about half of all the world's population. That's a lot of people. But wait, along with giving life, nitrogen can also take life. This is because 
It's also one of the main ingredients in lots of different explosives, like TNT, dynamite, and many more. Everything is a double-edged sword. Moving on, let's do some blue. Even though it's so important, it makes up only 20% of air. As you probably guessed, this is oxygen. Two of them, so it makes O2. Next time you pass by some plants or algae, even the mushy ones, you should probably tell them, thank you for breathing. Why? Because if they don't breathe, we can't breathe. You see, when plants and algae breathe, they release oxygen, which we animals later breathe in. So once again, thank you green stuff. Also, it's responsible for making matches burn and bicycle chains rust. And without oxygen, we won't be able to explore any other planets in the future. Let's see what else we have here. Now I know you're curious about this weird one. This little guy is called H2O, or as we know it, water. There's so much to say about water that we'll have to leave it for another video. So let's just put it back for now. Aha, now here's something new to most people. This little pink guy is called argon. It makes up about 1% of all the air around us, about the same amount as water. It's very useful in keeping certain foods and wines fresh. It's also used in regular and in fluorescent lighting. And it's even used in lasers, which is always cool. So that's it. There's still some small amounts of other stuff, like carbon dioxide, floating around here somewhere. But for now, we're done here. So let's get back to our regular size. So the air in our atmosphere is composed of molecules of different gases. The most common gases are nitrogen, oxygen, and argon. Other molecules are present in the atmosphere as well, but in very small quantities. This pie diagram or pie graph shows the percentage of the different gases in the air. And as you can see, the nitrogen and oxygen are major components of the air. The water vapor amount in the air can change, and when it changes, it can also change the amount of the other gases in the air. Okay? The biggest component of air is nitrogen. It comprises around 78% of the air. Out of the remaining 22%, 21% of air is composed of oxygen. So, nitrogen and oxygen gases form about 99% of air. The remaining 1% of air consists of several gases including carbon dioxide, argon, helium, neon, hydrogen, ozone and water vapor. So kids, now you know what air is composed of. During the past 100 years, and due to new technologies, the world has changed in many ways. Some changes have improved the quality of life and health for many people, yes. But others have affected people's health care, causing different kinds of pollution that have harmed the environment. But what is pollution? What is air pollution? Air pollution Air pollution is the introduction of foreign products into the atmosphere that have detrimental effects on living organisms and cause damage to the environment. Vehicles release chemicals in the form of exhaust fumes. These chemicals are very harmful to the environment. These gases also cause acid rain which is also very damaging to the earth. Many industries release a lot of fumes which are harmful for the environment. Refrigerators and air conditioners release chemicals called chlorofluorocarbons which over time lead to the formation of holes in the ozone layer. These holes let the ultraviolet rays of the sun reach the earth and thus cause various health problems for humans. Fumes released by weapons are also toxic. Volcanoes upon erupting eject tons of smoke and harmful gases. 
these toxic substances linger in the atmosphere for a long time, causing breathing problems for organisms. Naturally occurring radioactive materials inside the earth sometimes decay, releasing a gas called radon. It is considered to be a health hazard as it causes lung cancer if humans are exposed to it for a long time. Can you live without clean air, water and land? No, we cannot. Pollution is anything that harms our surroundings. And air pollution happens when unwanted chemicals, gases and particles enter the air. This causes harm to animals, plants and to us also and damages the nature cycles on the earth. Some sources of air pollution come from nature like we saw in the video. This, these include eruptions of volcanoes, dust storms and forest fires. Human activities is a major cause of air pollution, especially in large cities. Human air pollution is caused by things such as factories, power plants, cars, airplanes, chemicals, fumes from spray cans. So, one of the ways that humans cause the most air pollution is by burning fossil fuels. Fossil fuels include um, oil, gasoline. So, when we burn fossil fuels, we were releasing all sorts of gases into the air, causing air pollution, such as smoke. So, uh, when our cars, our vehicle releases uh, gases or fumes, we are polluting the air. So, we said that factories and cars, different kinds of vehicles, release uh, harmful gases into the atmosphere. Now we'll talk about acid rain. Acid rain is a form of air pollution uh, that happens when coal, gasoline are burned in vehicles, in electric power plants, in factories. So when these are burned, they release certain uh, harmful gases into the air. These gases go uh, into the air, they go up in the air, and they combine with the oxygen and water in the air. When the water in the air comes down as rain, sleet, hail, snow, it carries with it these gases. So this is known as acid rain. Acid rain is very damaging to all life forms. As you can see in this picture, um, some harmful gases go are released by uh, industries and factories into the air and they combine with the water in the clouds and then when it rains these harmful gases will go down on plants, animals, building, everything. Acid rain can pollute lakes and streams, it can kill the fish and the different organisms that live in them it also damages various kinds of vegetation, including trees. Uh, it can also uh, be harmful to our buildings and uh, houses. What is acid rain? Acid rain is any form of precipitation with high levels of nitric and sulfuric acids. It can occur in the form of snow, fog, and even dry materials that settle to earth. Most acid rain is caused by human activities. When people burn fossil fuels, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides are released into the atmosphere. These gases react with water, oxygen, and other substances to form sulfuric and nitric acid winds may spread these acidic solutions over hundreds of miles. After it falls to earth, acid rain enters water systems as runoff and sinks into the ground. This can make water toxic to crayfish, clams, fish, and other aquatic animals. The rest of the food chain, including non-aquatic species such as birds, is often affected as well. Acid rain also harms forests by damaging trees' leaves. 
robbing the soil of essential nutrients and making it hard for trees to take up water. By designing cleaner power plants and using fewer fossil fuels, we can reduce the number of pollutants that create acid rain. We should take proper steps to control air pollution. Some of the steps to control air pollution are, we should use public transport more. For short distances, use a bicycle or go by walking. Switch off the lights, fans, air conditioners, televisions and other appliances when not in use. Always recycle and reuse. Remember to carry paper bags and minimize using plastic bags. Plant trees as much as possible. Keeping our air clean is very important to protect the life on Earth. Since air pollution has harmful effect to all kinds of life on Earth, to uh, us, people, animals, and plants. And there are many techniques used to reduce or eliminate the emission into the atmosphere of the substances that can harm the environment or our health. Um, we can, for example, add filters to the factory stacks and uh, car exhausts, uh, since these filters will help uh, reduce the emissions of, uh, of harm harmful gases into the atmosphere, using one cars or uh, public transport or using uh, bicycles is better than using many cars in the same, by the same family. Uh, planting new trees, green plants is a great way to fight air pollution since as you know that carbon dioxide is one of the harmful gases that if it was found in high amounts in the air, it can lead to uh, air pollution. So the new plants or the new green tree will absorb carbon dioxide in order to use it for their food making process photosynthesis. And this way we are out cleaning our air pollution, our pollution, our air from the uh, carbon dioxide in it. Uh, burning fossil fuels such as gasoline will always release a poisonous and harmful substances into the atmosphere. But using unleaded gasoline is better than using the leaded uh, one. Uh, you can also uh, recycle, reuse uh, different things. You can, for example, stop making big fires, stop throwing trash in water or on land. And as I said, there are many ways or techniques to uh, reduce air pollution. Air pollution consists of chemicals or particles in the atmosphere that pose serious health and environmental threats. But what causes air pollution and what does it mean for our planet? Some air pollution comes from natural sources like volcanic eruptions, wildfires, or allergens. But most air pollution results from human activities such as energy use and agriculture. There are different types of human-made air pollution. When we burn fossil fuels to produce energy, they release greenhouse gases into the air. These emissions, such as carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and fluorinated gases trap heat from the sun in Earth's atmosphere, leading to a rise in global temperatures. This creates a cycle where air pollution contributes to climate change, and climate change creates higher temperatures. In turn, higher temperatures intensify some types of air pollution. For example, Climate change increases smog because it forms in the presence of high heat and increased levels of ultraviolet radiation. More frequent extreme weather, such as flooding, contributes to damp conditions and therefore to a rise in mold. Warmer weather also leads to longer pollen seasons and therefore more pollen production. Smog is a type of air pollution that reduces visibility and has serious health effects. Smog can be divided into two categories, sulfurous and photochemical. Sulfurous smog is made up of chemical compounds called sulfur oxides. It occurs when burning sulfur-bearing fossil fuels such as coal. Photochemical smog 
also called ground level ozone, is a result of the reaction between sunlight, nitrogen oxides, and volatile organic compounds. Nitrogen oxides come from car exhaust, coal power plants, and factory emissions. Volatile organic compounds are released from gasoline, paints, and many cleaning solvents. Smog not only creates a brown haze that reduces visibility, but also harms plants, irritates the eyes, and causes respiratory distress. Another category of air pollution is toxic pollutants. These are chemicals such as mercury, lead, dioxins, and benzene that are released during gas or coal combustion, waste incineration, or burning of gasoline. In addition to adverse environmental effects, toxic air pollution can cause serious health problems such as cancer, reproductive complications, and birth defects. While air pollution has many consequences for our planet, there are solutions. We can limit toxic pollutants, smog, and greenhouse gases by decreasing the use of fossil fuels, such as in transportation, manufacturing, and electricity generation. Reducing air pollution not only contributes to a cleaner environment and better human health, but can also slow the rate of global warming. And reducing pollutants in the air is important for human health and the environment. Poor air quality or polluted, uh, polluted air has harmful effects on human health, especially on our respiratory and cardiovascular systems. Pollutants can also damage plants and buildings. It can reduce visibility. So uh, to reduce air pollution, we can choose to walk, cycle, take public transport rather than drive a car. Um, let's say industri industries can use uh, pollution control devices to remove pollutants by absorbing, filtering them. And there are many ways to care for our uh, nature. Uh, if you still have any questions about the lesson, any clarification, I'm always available to answer all of your of your questions. Until I meet you on uh, our, in our meeting on Zoom, uh, stay safe. Um, can't wait to see you. Take care. Bye bye.